That's the intro. Hello again, Mr. Kong. Are you ready for the snippings? <laughs> the snippings! <laughs> I'm frugal. Look at this. It's clear snippings. <laughs> oh, that's more rubbery than I thought it was. How a monster you! <laughs> Go. Uh, oh, Jean Fit, I'm stroking me cactus. The finer snippings! Yeah. <laughs> Here's the box without Kong in it, and plastic shell. Whoops, plastic shell that was holding Kong in place, along with these Kong kind of looking like Wolfman with his mouth open. Nothing on the bottom. On the back, we just have an image of Kong fighting a skull crawler. And a little bit of a read up over here. And that's it. Outside of the box, this Kong looks pretty cool. Maybe a little bit too bright in the brown areas. It should have been a little bit more muddied up because Kong wasn't this bright in the movie. But other than that, this does look pretty good. Memeable to all heck, but why is Kong so emotionless? Like, damn, Kong's just like, yep, M figure. Blech. Despite lacking in emotion, there is some very, very nice detail going on with Kong's face. He's got wrinkles at the top of his nose. His nose looks pretty good. His brow is left a little yogurty, but his upper lip and lower lip have clear definition to separate the two apart from one another. And the fact that Kong's ears look like actual ears is a plus. Major details on the chest are a little bit muted as they are on the neck, but they are still there. Ironically, you're going to get even more detail on Kong's back, but that is because there is a presence of fur. Meanwhile, on his chest, it is mostly going to be just bare skin, no nipples. The same could be said for Kong's guns over here as well. Nicely defined, nicely detailed with the fur, boots with the fur. Ample amounts of fur detail on the knuckles, the top of the hand, to the wrist, to the forearm, to the bicep, looking very nice. Even the hand is nicely detailed with some wrinkles, and maybe a little bit of a fingernail on that thumb, maybe a little bit, just a teens. The other hand, you're going to be able to see more detail, more so on the wrinkling side and on the fingernail side. The nail on the thumb is faint, but it is still there. Opening up Kong's hand, you can see a little bit of that wrinkle detail. And as you can see, just a lot of fur. The same thing said about Kong's arms and hands can be said about about his legs and feet. Fantastic detail on the legs and feet. There is a presence of wrinkles and toenails on both of Kong's feet. And even on the bottom of Kong's feet, you will find some nice detail, but mostly just trademark stuff. Oh Lord, those monkey cheeks. Now time for articulation. Arms can go full 360 degrees around. Legs, while cut at an angle, can go this far forward and that far back, this far forward, that far back, the feet, can swivel all the way around, and quite possibly the most interesting part about this figure is Big Monkey got the bowel joint at the head. He can look up very far. Look at that. He is looking up. He is looking down, not too far. Side to side. Can go all the way around. And I am just really impressed that that looks really good. It doesn't break illusion at all. There's even some detail under where his head is, so even if you're having him peer up, you can still see a little bit of fur detail going on. Even under his chin at the beginnings of the beard. Hey, did I mention these nostrils, though? The nostrils are actual holes in the sculpt. Color me impressed. So Playmates' very first six inch Kong actually came out pretty well, with the only downside being that emotionless, memeable face. Everything else I'd say is pretty dang good. The only thing I think this figure was missing was wrist articulation, and maybe something to hold in his hand since it's so clearly made to have something held in his hand. Hello! I absolutely don't feel this figure is a failure in any which way. If the rumors are true that all the Series 1 Classics line stuff from both Skull Island and Godzilla are being retired, I would suggest picking this up now if he in any which way seems appealing to you. Because we may never see this sculpt again, or it might be brought back as a vinyl figure. Who knows? But anyway, let's go a size bigger. Let's take a look at Big Boy Kong. Well, hello again, Mr. Kong. Are you ready for the snippings, my boy? Me hugging, hugging, stringing, snipping. 
Kong breaks out and box. All right, you sticky wicket. I'll get you. <laughs> you cannot stop me. You cannot stop the snipping skunk. Oh, I see you over there. You think you can hide from my snip? Never. <laughs> All right, so looking at the box again, we have that same image of Kong, actually of the figure we just took out of it, and still looking kind of Wolfman-ish. I mean, obviously he's Big Monk, but still there's, uh, whatever. There is the uh, bottom of the box where the feet were. I'm gonna have to snip all this out. But on the back of the box, as you can see, we have that same image of Kong versus a skull crawler from Kong Skull Island, nothing more. It appears the Kong and Godzilla lines are treated differently for the classic series. Here's to hoping we get more Kong figures very, very soon. Right out the box, this Kong looks really, really good, surprisingly. A little bright, much like his smaller counterpart. Uh, his fur was definitely not that brown in the movie. It was much more muted. But aside from that, this figure looks really, really good. Probably a lot better than it's really allowed to look at this point. Just look at this face. This face is teeming with detail. We've got wrinkles on the brow. We've got wrinkles all around the eyes, giving him so much life. The nostrils on this figure though, they are solid. They are not actual holes in the mold like the six inch Kong figure. But uh, for the most part, holy moly, this looks really good for an ages four and up figure. The wrinkles, the stretching of the skin around the mouth, the fur. I'm sorry, but with all of these amazing details on this figure, it really does look better than it really should. But just looking inside the mouth, all the individually sculpted teeth, the tongue, the detail on the teeth, the fact that this figure has gums even though they are not painted, it still looks really, really good. Again, this figure has no business, no right to look as good as it does. I mean, just look at that. That's fantastic. Jeez. When it comes to the rest of the figure, though, you are essentially going to be getting what you got with the six-inch figure. Really good detail with the fur, muted detail on the skin, and not much else. You are unfortunately going to get screw holes on Kong's butt and back, but I really don't think this is much of a turn away for this figure, considering you're really not going to be posing this figure from behind, so I really don't think it's too bad. You will be seeing seams going down the arms, much like with the GVK Kong, but really I don't see that as much of a problem. I really do think the chest looks okay, the scars do look a little clean, especially considering how much better they look on the six inch figure. I mean, I like that they look more jagged. Nah. <laughs> and you'll see the belly button, you'll see the definition in his thighs and his knees and his feet. You really are just getting an upscaled version of the six inch figure, just, you know, with better details. I mean, if you look at whatever these are, you can see that Kong does have wrinkles on his toes and nails on his toes as well. Yes, even the bigger toes on the sides, nails and wrinkles. You will be getting fingernail detail on the thumbs, including wrinkles on the fingers. You will also get more of that superb hand wrinkle and nail detail on the other hand, which does look like it can hold something. Just about anything. <laughs> big in size, big in detail, pretty decent on the paint. Again, I do think the fur slash hair should have been a little bit more muted, but for the most part, this Kong be looking very, very nice. Speaking of looking very, very nice, he scales with the NECA 24 inch Godzilla 2014 figure very, very well. I'm surprised even. This looks pretty movie accurate if you ask me, but then again, we really don't have much of the... <laughs> And when it comes to the Playmate Skullcrawler over here, I mean, it kind of looks like Kong found a giant iguana in the backyard and is like, Mom, can I keep it? So with newer Playmates releases and with older NECA releases, this figure fits in pretty well to pretty much anybody's collection at this point, I think. Before we get into talking about articulation, I really did just want to address this. The GVK Big Kong and the Kong Skull Island Big Kong are two very different figures. As you can see, the GVK Kong is a little bit more shorter in stature. He's got the broader shoulders, the bigger arms, the bigger hands, the bigger legs. In fact, if I were to bet anything on this, it might just be the legs that were reused, but they do look a little bit shorter. They do look a little bit thicker when compared to the two. Even the GVK hands look better than the KSI hands. So for anybody thinking that they are just the same figure with different paint, uh, no, they're both completely different figures with different sculpts to them. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is a well-addressed thing right now, but I just wanted to sprinkle this in here before we got any further. But anyway, let's get to talking about articulation. 
Starting at the head, you can go all the way around with Gong. Unfortunately, this figure does not have a ball joint in the neck like the six inch figure does, so you're only going to be looking left and right behind you as well. The arms can go all the way around. Both of them can, in fact. The legs, while cut in an angle like the six inch figure, can, unlike the six inch figure, go all the way around. Look at that, both of them all the way around. The feet, while well, on the tighter side, can go all the way around. Lift up und leg kong. See? And yet again, unlike the six-inch figure, though hands can go all the way around. They are on a swivel. Both of them. Fantastic! So to end this off, I would definitely say in terms of paint, and in detail, and in articulation, this Kong is probably the best big Kong figure you can get. Again, I'm gonna keep my eye out for that muted re-released version. Honestly, aside from the fur, the only thing that I would have them change on this is just, hey, paint the gums, then it's perfectly fine. <coughs> I think this figure is just a testament to how good these Playmates figures can be. And I don't think we're foolish for hoping for more bigger and better quality figures much like this one. But anyway, before I go about repeating myself, let's cut back to my face and end off this video. I like monkey. Seriously, despite the rather bright color palettes of these figures, I really, really like how they turned out. And just owning these things makes me all the more hyped to see what Playmates other Kong figures are going to look like. I know we're getting an original one, and I know we're getting, you know, the GVK Mega Kong figure at some point. I'm very, very, very excited to pick those up, see how they come out. Seriously, I never thought I'd be excited to be picking out Kong figures, but Playmates made a Kong fan out of me? Weird. But anyway, I am Shin Rob Jira. Do hope you enjoyed this video. Next week, if the Bandai Movie Monster Shin Godzilla doesn't show up, I am going to be taking a look at the Playmates Destroya, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a comparison with the Bandai Movie Monster series Destroya, just so that video isn't like four minutes long like this video originally was. So yeah, Shin Rob Jira, Playmates Kong, Playmates Godzilla stuff next week, or Bandai Godzilla stuff next week. See you all then and there. Peace. <laughs>